Hey everyone, welcome to part four of the Kurzweil K2000R kind of restoration um, information uh, video series here. So in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the SCSI to SD uh, virtual hard drive adapter. So I've talked about these many times before. Again, in my S5000, the Kai S5000 video, I talked about this pretty much in depth, even though in that unit I did stick a regular hard drive in, mostly because that unit's a lot more modern than these and, and it can see the larger hard drives. It's got the beefier power supply to support it. And I have a bunch of the drives, so it, it just you know, it didn't cost me anything to add one. These little devices are, you know, nice because there's a lot of benefits to them, but they, you know, do cost a bit of money, 70, 80 bucks, somewhere around there. So I save them for the devices where it makes more sense to use them, and the K2000R is definitely one of those devices. So I shot most of the video for this uh, video in my previous video in part three of the K2000R series, but I chose to make this its own dedicated video because I know there's a lot of interest in these devices. So this way this video will be dedicated just for this device, the installation and configuration of it, and that way you won't need to listen to me and you know, ramble on about other hardware that may not be pertaining to the, the point of this anyway. So the adapter that I have in here, uh, installed in here, is one I bought off eBay. I, I want to say the price was around $80 or so, I don't remember exactly offhand. I bought a bunch of these over the past year or so. Um, the version that's in here is version 5.1. I wanted to mention that because there's a bunch of different versions of it, and that is the hardware version. There are some different versions of the 5 series, there's also newer 6 series. Um, version 5.1 has the 50 pin 8 bit SCSI narrow connector, which is what you need to integrate it into the K2000R, which is what that cable is there. And then there's a version 6.2, which offers better performance, but it's not necessary for this. Uh, the SCSI interface on this can't write very fast anyway. Uh, it's still reasonable performance, don't get me wrong, but you know, you're not going to be you know, blazingly writing 10, 20 megabytes per second out of this. So the older versions of the adapter didn't have the built-in software termination. It was actually just resistor packs you had to remove from it to enable or disable the termination, which isn't a big deal. It's just nice having the software termination on there because some newer devices, if you were to use this with them, um, don't, need, don't, don't necessarily need the termination there. So I do want to talk about this in a little bit more detail, and we'll get into that now. If you're not familiar with these, these things are outstanding, absolutely outstanding. They're just a simple little solid state device. It's based on a Cypress uh, semiconductor. This is a PSOC, a programmable system on a chip, basically type uh, um, processor. It's based on an ARM 32-bit processor and it's got tons of I.O. The Cypress has got a huge IDE that you can actually program these with. I mean, it supports everything out there in terms of different protocols and they're unbelievably powerful, cool devices. So somebody took one of these, designed a simple interface for SCSI and SD card that emulates, you know, basically a SCSI bus and all the different features of SCSI bus. You can work with all sorts of old gear in terms of weird standards and different partition sizes and things like that. Um, all you need to do is basically just get an SD card, um, anything out there. I just have some of these 60 gig ones, which are overkill for this, but it's just what I have. Um, plug it into a computer via USB in the front there. And then from a little utility you can download to program these, you can configure it um, to work in your device in terms of how you want it to work. So you can set all sorts of different SCSI standards and you know different little little configuration bits for different you know older SCSI proprietary standards and things like that that you know will make this more compatible with more devices. Uh, that aside, straight out of the box, it pretty much works with just about anything, which is good. Uh, the main thing you have to do is you just have to format the SCSI partitions on the card in terms of sizes that are compatible with your device. So the K2000R with versions of firmware above 3.1, I think it was, you can have a two gig drive. It supports up to a two gig drive. If you're below 3.1, it'll only support a one gig drive, but uh, there's no reason to update the firmware. It's easy to do as I've shown. So with that in this device, you know, which means you can, you know, based on the firmware that's in here, I can only support up to two gigs on the 16 gig card. But what's neat about that is you can create four virtual SCSI IDs on here. So this can appear as up to four different actual SCSI drives in the K2000R. So I can create four two gig partitions on this SD card, format them, or configure, you know, basically the, the configuration for this on there, plug this into the K2000R, um, it'll see four different drives, then from here I can format those four different drives. So just with this device, you can have basically eight gigs of storage internally on a device that uses essentially no power. You know, as I mentioned before in the previous video, the power supplies in this, you know, they're limited in terms of modern SCSI drives. So a lot of times these won't even power on just due to the, the current drive necessary to get these modern drives, SCSI, you know, spinning disk drives spinning. So this uses no power, produces no heat, it's quiet. They're just, they're just fantastic devices. I uh, highly recommend them. You know, they're about 70, 80 bucks, they're not cheap, but they're well worth it. 
In a previous video, uh, I think it was my part one when I was talking about the introduction to these devices, I mentioned that there was notes actually on the inside of this one that says the SCSI uh, interface stopped working. So I tested this and it actually works and I found out the problem, it ended up just being the SCSI cable. This cable is bad. So there must be a you know a small short or something like that near the ends um, of one of these you know pins of cable because besides that physically it looks fine. There's no other telltale signs that there's any issues there. So it's got to be something with some of the termination on one side or the other. Um, I'm not going to bother dealing with it. I just have other cables that I can use. But with this cable plugged in, this device wouldn't even power on. Once I remove this and put in a different cable plugged in my SCSI, you know it's a SD. Um, device it all came up just fine so I just need to replace the cable that's all the SCSI issue with this actually was so in terms of power in this device inside there's actually a separate uh, wiring harness with a Molex connector designed for powering uh, hard drives now this is kind of buried and, and underneath some zip ties here so you have to dig for it to get it out but once you have it you can use this to power the, the S, you know the SD card or the SCSI SD adapter now it uses a floppy power interface on there and one of the issues with my device is, is that power actually comes over from a pin on the engine board here, but I was missing that with this unit. Uh, I'm missing some other things too, too, which I'll talk about, but it doesn't matter. I can, you can just make it buy or make a little adapter cable to convert this Molex connector, you know, down to the pin compatible um, four pin for a floppy standard on there, and then use that to power this device up. Now, one other thing that was missing when I bought this unit was right here, there's supposed to be an entire little drive, metal drive chassis that holds all the drives in place. It holds the floppy down here at the bottom, and then it's got room at the top to actually have your hard drive in there. That's a place to mount that. So, when the drives are bad in here, they took that out, never reinstalled it, and I'm without one. So, I need a way to mount this in there, which is no big deal. I still have the standoffs on the bottom in here, so I just got a little scrap piece of aluminum. Um, I'm going to mount this to the bottom of that, screw it in there, get the depth of it right and the height right. And then this will hold it in place so that I can still have access to the SD card and the USB port on the front of the device here. You could buy these without this little plastic bezel, just the board. Uh, you don't really need access to the, the you know, SD card per se if you don't want to. And then from there you can just you know Velcro this inside the chassis somewhere you know, out of the way if you wanted to. Um, just as an easier solution, but they're roughly the same price with or without this little piece of plastic. One last little thing I want to do this before I mount it to is I want to add an activity LED to the front of it here so I can see what's going on. It has one on board. This little service mount LED right here will light up whenever there's any SCSI activity uh, to let you know what's going on. But there's nothing on the front panel and you can't see that when this is all enclosed and up in the unit. So there's actually a pinout right here for an LED, uh, even with a, a current limiting resistor right there on the board for it. So I'm just going to drill a small little 3mm hole right here in the front add the LED and just solder to these two pads right there that are already pre-populated or pre-existing for an LED I should say. So here is the SCSI SD adapter mounted in my K2000R. Uh, this is obviously the location where the floppy drive went as I mentioned. Uh, right there you can see too I've got the little LED mounted in the front there. As far as mounting on the inside, uh, I definitely have it mounted in there just in the bracket like I mentioned. It wasn't that big deal. I got it lined up pretty well. I've still got a small little gap right here. These aren't you know, the exact size. They're slightly smaller dimension than the hole that's in the unit. But once the lid's on, the cover's on there, you, know, you won't have any light or anything coming out of that gap right there. So the next steps are to get this programmed, which I am going to show right now. So the application used to program the SCSI to SD device is simply called SCSI to SD Util. So it's a free application that's out there you can find and it allows you to set all the different parameters for this device specifically for older compatibility if necessary along with your actual devices in terms of the actual SCSI, the virtual SCSI drives on there. So to use this you simply plug it into your SCSI to SD uh, device. You can do it while it's off and read the configuration on there and you'll be at this screen here. So under general settings, there's a couple options here. Uh, the only ones that matter for the K2000R are simply the enable SCSI termination. So SCSI termination is important on these older SCSI standards and it is required uh, for the K2000R to work properly. Besides that, you can ignore all the additional settings here because they don't matter for this device. So under the device tabs, you've got four of them here. Those are essentially your virtual SCSI targets or your SCSI drives as they appear to the K2000R. So under here you have a handful of options and, and some of these you do need to set. Uh, the very first one is your SCSI ID. So you need to set the SCSI ID for the actual virtual drive you're going to be using. For all of my uh, devices I always use zero for my SCSI CD-ROMs. So I'm going to start uh, with my unit uh, SCSI ID 1 for the actual uh, first drive in this unit. Now for the older SCSI standards you've got 8 total drives, 0 through 7. In the case of the K2000R, drive 6, I believe, is used by the K2000R itself. 
that is it's the host ID so you can't use 6 but 0 through 5 along with ID 7 are available for use. So next you have the device type which is left at hard drive for this device and then scrolling down a little bit further you've got the device size. So this is what I mentioned before as long as you've got the version 3 firmware or higher you can set this to 2 gigabytes. As the K2000R can see 2 gigabyte drives max on there. Besides that, there's two fields on here that you can actually set. One's called vendor, one's called product ID. So there are defaults that come set here uh, for this device. Now both of these fields are viewable on the front of the K2000R when you look at your drive configurations. So you can label them something different to clue you into what they actually are. For product ID, I just leave it SCSI to SD so it reminds myself that what, you know, what this device actually is in the unit in case I do have an external hard drive plugged in there. But under vendor, I switch it to actually disk name, so I just name them disk1 in this case so that this way I realize that disk1 matches up to SCSI ID1 so I know exactly what drive I'm looking at in, in here. And that's important because you've got multiple drives in here as I mentioned. So you can just leave this with a single device and that'd be fine. Once you write this configuration back to the SCSI to ST, this will basically be a 2 gig drive that's viewable on SCSI ID 1 in the K2000R. But because this supports four, uh, up to 4 drives total and we have the space on my SD card because I'm using a 16 gig SD in there, there's no reason not to configure the additional devices. So for that, uh, for each individual device, you basically just increase the SCSI ID, increment it by one. So in this case, uh, the next drive I set SCSI ID 2. I leave everything else the same. I, lame, I name it disk 2 just for my own personal reference. And then check this auto uh, selection here under SD card start sector. This will automatically calculate where the next sector on the drive will start. So you don't have to do those manual calculations for you. Then you just continue this process for device 3 and device 4. Once all these devices are done, you basically go File, and then you go Save to Device. And this actually writes the configuration down to the SCSI to SD. Once complete, that's it. Uh, disconnect the USB cable, just to make sure your power and SCSI cables are hooked up inside the K2000R to the SCSI to SD, and then power it on. So back in the bench, I've got my SCSI SD adapter uh, hooked up to both power and SCSI uh, interface, as I mentioned. So if you go under disk, uh, under current disk there, if you increment, you'll see so SCSI ID 0, which is empty, which I mentioned before, I saved that for CD-ROMs. But SCSI ID 1, this is the first SCSI to SD uh, virtual hard drive that I've got uh, set up in here. So you can see SCSI to SD, that label that was there, along with disk 1, that label I had set. Now if you increment, you can see under 2 I've got disk 2, under 3 disk 3, 4 disk 4, and then 5 is empty, 6 is the actual host adapter as I mentioned, 7 empty as well. So now that these drives are here, you still do have to format them. So uh, they're not usable at the moment, you definitely need to get the file system on there that the K2000R uses. So uh, under the menu you go format, just confirm, it will have you confirm a bunch of times, and then it will go ahead and format. So you can see my low activity LED over here uh, lighting up, indicating the drive is formatting. And it actually goes pretty quick on these K2000Rs. And that's it. Skipping ahead. Uh, it took about 40 seconds or so to do that drive, so not too bad. Uh, you'll just need to repeat that step for each individual drive. And once you've got all four formatted, that's it. You're done. You're able to use this, store your data there, and uh, enjoy. Under each disk, you can get a little bit more information too. Uh, under utility, then info, and it'll show you the information about the disk right there. So again, you can see the two labels that you can set within the software uh, if you wanted to, and then also the actual size, in this case, two gigs uh, total space. So that's all there is to put one of these in the, in the K2000R. Uh, the K2000R, at least with the latest firmware, is a modern enough device where there's really no uh, funniness about it in terms of getting the drive to work. Uh, again, the only limitation is the 2 gig, you know, maximum size in terms of what it can see and what it can address, which, you know, isn't that big of a deal. You know, with the four drives in there, you know, you got like eight gigs, ter eight gigs total uh, internal storage, which is still pretty good. But again, these SCSI to ST adapters can work in pretty much any device out there. There's tons of compat compatibility lists to it, and even some of the really old stuff. Uh, those configuration bits I showed in the menu when you're configuring it, a lot of those will help enable uh, additional items, you know, additional hardware out there that might have some weird standards and things like that. So that is it. Uh, hopefully this was beneficial to you, and thank you for watching.